Hey guys, welcome to the first episode of the 100 Masterminds Project video series. In these videos, we're going to share with you actual mastermind group meetings so you can really see the benefit firsthand. This first video is actually about me and the 100 Masterminds Project. I sat down with my mastermind group, shared the project with them, and they gave me some invaluable feedback that you're going to see throughout the show. Enjoy. Okay, so I'll get started. Um... Kind of my master, my hot seat today is pretty much what we've been doing, right? My idea is I want to record 100 different masterminds over the course of the next two to three years. Um, I'd like to do it in two, so that comes out to about one a week with a few weeks off for Christmas and all the rest of it. But life happens, so I'm guessing it'll probably take around three um, to record 100 masterminds. But I, there's also stuff I want to create on the side. So, for example, this video, which I'm creating, I'm going to do the mastermind. I'm going to pay somebody to do the transcript for people who want. And then I'm going to extract the audio and make it into a podcast as well, where I'll do an intro and an outro. And then just all of us talking about it are going to be there. Part of the website is I'm going to ask from you guys and everybody who's in the mastermind groups in the future, a profile of everybody who's in the mastermind so that, you know, they have the background. Some of the stuff we're talking about, if they don't know that, you know, Lily's an author and Tiffany's a belly dancer and JC's a, you know, consultant and Keith, who knows? Um, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, exactly. Gremlin smasher. Um, you know, the context is, is lost. So there'll be the profile there for people to read and then they can watch the masterminds afterwards and see the stuff we discussed. Not only can you know, get the information out of the mastermind videos themselves, but also see how to run a mastermind. You know, this is the, third mastermind I've been in and by far the most experienced group I've been with and compared to the other ones I've been in it's very organized but I know a lot of people don't really know how to run a mastermind I've read the four books I've been able to get my hands on on masterminding on Amazon and I, they were very lacking very lacking and kind of what's the structure of a mastermind how does it work what is a mastermind like what is the definition of a mastermind um, I think I might have put that in a document there but it'll be a yeah. working definition mm -hmm. Because when I started telling this idea to other people, the first thing is like, yeah, you should sit in on a board meeting. A board meeting at a company is not a mastermind because they're working towards know. one goal, right? They're not working for each individual's goal. You can have a mastermind internally in a company. So I'd be really inter interested to find that, right? You've got the manager from the HR department talking to the manager of the IT department, talking to the manager of the, you know, meeting once a month. And it'd be really cool because I've worked in corporate before, right? And usually it's all silos. So the guy in HR has no idea what the guy in sales is doing and has no idea what the other one's doing. But if, he's, if they all get together once a month and kind of talk about their individual problems, they might get solutions from other parts of the company um, to solve their individual problems. So I think masterminds could also be used within a corporate setting. But we have the hot seat group, you know, setting. We have the accountability one where everybody talks, is this what I'm going to do? This is what I'm going to do next week. There must be other formats that people are doing all around the world. There just doesn't seem to be any information on that. Um, yeah. I'm curious, like, does mastermind work better if everybody's the same age or more ages or all women, all men or a mix or, you yeah, know. That's interesting. Yeah, I, I have opinions are, on a lot of these if you want them. I would love, well, like, you know, one of the things I want to do, I actually want to do individual <laughs> interviews on the side. That won't okay. count towards the 100 mastermind count. But I've talked to some people, um, for example, Jason, in, I understand, right? Some of these mastermind groups are very intimate, so I won't be able to record them. But if I can at least talk to somebody in them and kind of get information out, one of the mastermind groups I'm really interested in getting information about, so if anybody here has contacts, is Alcoholics Anonymous. I really think that's a mastermind. It's a group of people. It who is. Equal. Yeah, it's a group of equal working to help everybody else in that group. But, of course, I can't sit in an Alcoholics Anonymous with a video camera and start taping everybody. That The whole mm -hmm. anonymous part's kind of disappear at that point, right? Um, but I'd like to talk to somebody who's gone through it, maybe successfully gone through the program, and say, okay, how did you get out? One of my best friends uh, did his, his master's thesis on the, on the principles of AA, and he came through uh, homelessness and narcotics anonymous before he became a psychologist. Do you I think would, he'd be willing to talk to me, just kind of talk about the benefits of the group, how it works, you know, how the benefit, what kind of benefits he's got out of it? Um, you know, in a general sense, I'm, I'm not, I don't want to pry into the details. Oh, people, no, absolutely. Absolutely. Because I mean, I I've consulted with him on, as he started to do medical research and kind of grow that, that go through that political process of becoming a lead researcher and bringing remote work to hospitals. Um, and the other half of that consulting tree was his sponsor um, to make sure that he had like the support structures necessary and that he wasn't getting in over his head and and yeah, no, he is, he's had a very unique and interesting experience. And I'll absolutely ask if he'd be willing to, to, to kind of talk and interview with you. That would be awesome. Thanks a lot. And I mean, that's exactly the kind of thing I'm looking for. Because 
there's so much, I think there's a lot of people in mastermind groups. They don't really know they are. Nobody else. It's not really shared. It's the not formalized. They're not formalized, right? And you know, you don't have to call a mastermind group a mastermind group in order for it to be one. It's a book club. Exactly. Exactly. And but there must be ways to do it better. I mean, you know, there should be a structure of how we're going to do it. For example, there should be roles like you know, Lily over there takes notes on the group and sends them out. So you know, there's. I think there are going to be certain you know tasks in a mastermind group to kind of keep continuity in place. Um, somebody maybe just to lead the thing through. So, Hey, your time's up, move it on. I'm in another mastermind group where, you know, sometimes some people take a lot more time than the other ones. I mean, way more time, literally an hour and the rest, the whole rest of the group may take 30, 30 minutes. Um, so, you know, there's nobody there to kind of say, okay, politely, that's, you know, that's, we, you need a little bit of structure to these kind of things. So anyway, it's kind of a very non-specific idea now because the whole point is not to go into it with these huge preconceptions of this is what a mastermind group is. This is how it should mm -hmm. be run. I want to sit, watch a hundred of them. And then afterwards, hopefully I'll have some ideas. Short term idea is kind of reach out into my network. I think I can get like five to 10 and hopefully with you guys kind of reach out to a few more, maybe 20 people recorded. After that, I want to start reaching out to some of the bigger boys. You know, the ones that, you know, I'm talking like Pat Flynn, Tim Ferriss, see if I can record there. I know they're in mastermind groups. They mentioned it on their podcasts all the time, right? I would love to be able to go and just record their podcasts. I mean, I will fly wherever, you know, if they're in, you know, mm -hmm. Tim Ferriss is in Africa right now. I will fly to Africa with a camera just so I can record you guys. I mean, you know, I'm not going to talk. I'm not, I'll leave the room if you want. I'm just going to set up the camera in the corner, right? But how to see like these, you know, the big boys, how they do mastermind groups and the information that they get out of it. I think, um, and really, once you get one of them, you can use that as leverage mm -hmm. to get all the other ones. Exactly. Mm -hmm. So I'd like to kind of build up to that. That's why, I, you know, thanks to you guys. I, this is going to be the first one. It's going to be like my proof of concept. So when I reach out to others, I'm like, look, this is what I did. Um, this is going to be true. I'm going to pay to get this whole thing transcri transcribed, which will be a lot of text, but some people just prefer reading, right? Instead, you know, instead of listening to something or watching the video. So I want to give all these options. I'd even like to translate it if there's an interest. So I'll translate the transcript in Spanish um, so that, you know, people who speak another language might not be able to understand it, but they'd be able to come in on that. There'll be show notes when I edit the video. I'm going to, you know, any kind of referred links will kind of pop up on the screen in the video while we're doing it. Um, That's it. Super califragilistic expialidocious idea, Ray. I can't spell that, so that's not popping up on the screen. But yeah, <laughs> I, do. I do know how to do that. I know basic the, video editing. So that was for I mean, the transcriber. Exactly. <laughs> like, okay. Well, I'm going to go out to LA and see if I can find somebody to do it uh, instead of trying to go to the Philippines and try to find somebody over there. So that's the basic you, idea. I think as you go through this process, as you're finishing your research area, I would say that uh, a good flow process when you're in the process of building your platform, because that's going to take some time. Mm -hmm. um, is to consider taking your initial research and maybe even while you're writing the book, um, co-design or uh, I'm not sure what the word is for at the same time, simul design a uh, like a like a mastermind facilitator certification. Um, and 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 I would and I would say and take it a step further by doing some really heavy LinkedIn marketing in through this process to build that brand specifically on LinkedIn. Because if you can build that brand on LinkedIn specifically, you can add cert badges to your course and add them to LinkedIn, and it starts to carry weight with the people that are offering mastermind groups um, that are certified by you. The, the coaches that I started developing my framework off of, two, one of them actually offers a mastermind um, certification, um, and that's, um, that's John Maxwell. He specializes in leadership training. John Maxwell was that one of the books I read? I can't remember. Uh, no, yeah, no. you can you can ever miss the title of his books. It's the insert number here, uh, principles of X. Like, oh, okay. It's always something like that: teamwork, leadership, de personal development. Like that's his entire writing style. Yeah. He writes a ton. This is what uh, Heath wants to do with the journal. Right. Um, but I think that could be a good passive income generator while you're building your platform. Mm -hmm. um, as your research completes. And um, I, I'm, I'm going to say this, and, I'm, and I mean this in all seriousness, I would love to be the pe person to beta test your platform. I did the math yesterday on what the overhead cost would be for me to run 100 mastermind groups. And I realized that, A, that's actually not a lot of people. <laughs> and uh, B, it's sickeningly profitable. Um, and C, I would love to be in partnership with a, a, a an organization that is really working to refine the process. Um, 
and have a group of people that are that I can nicely use as guinea pigs in order to test ideas and principles. And so maybe it's when you're we're in, in Cabo, but we have to sit down and have a uh, an extended conversation about how I can help and support you because I so stoked by what you're doing here, man. Awesome. No, well, that was the first question, and definitely I'm interested as well. My first question to you guys was, what do you think of the idea? Um, you know, it sounds good, like all ideas, sounds great in my head, but then you say it out loud and everybody's like, uh, you know. I, so. think, I think it's a good idea because it's, you're right, there's a gap. There's a thing that everyone talks about and no one knows how to do, mm-hmm. which is why so many people pay so much money to get into masterminds. Like, it's, it is, it is, like as JC said, right? It's a ridiculously profitable thing. And it the more experienced the mastermind, the more money people will pay to be part of one. Yeah. And so I think you're right. There's a gap there from the beginner to the person who's really experienced that could that could be filled. Um but I also feel like you're running you might run into the issue right where like you said People don't know this is a thing that they want. And they, even people who come into LI, like, we have, to, I mean, I have to do a whole thing. It's like, here's what a mastermind is. Mm-hmm. And here's why it's important and why you should do it. But the problem is, and it, to speak to one of your questions, I found the most successful masterminds are the ones that self select. And how do so, they self select? And you, I mean, how do you define self selection in that case? Like, like, they're the ones who put it together. Like, I didn't. I didn't put them together. Someone else didn't put them together. They met each other through LI or at an event, right? Like, 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 like us. <laughs> um, and decided that this was something they wanted to do. Got to make that a dating site for masterminds. Well, actually, yeah. uh, it, uh, all joking aside, that's actually was one of the things I hope to add to this at the end is essentially a mastermind a place to find mastermind groups. Um, Tinder for masterminds? Yeah, well, exactly. Oh, yeah. I already actually kind of, ha- I had the system built. I, like like JC was saying, I have the system. Of course, yeah, I mean, you know, I built I built systems. I just never bothered built marketing them. Um, so, you know, I have, I, I have the mastermind group for the for the Twidgicate, right? Which is essentially that. The beta is running right now. Um, and I just copy and paste it, change the word from teacher to students to, you know, mastermind, I think, team leader. I guess I'm going to have to try to figure out a title for the, the person who just kind of makes sure the administrator more than anything else, right? To mm-hmm. make sure that the date's set and everybody has contact information, stuff like that. Um, and the system will send out reminders and everything. And I also have that other system, which right now is actually a tutor matching system that I use in like on Mutu, on Matu, Matu right? Where mm-hmm. people essentially say, I'm creating a mastermind. This is going to be the profile. It'll send out an email based on certain char- characteristics to everybody who's kind of created a profile in the database, who's mark themselves as I'm looking for a mastermind and say, okay, this new mastermind group is forming for five people. Uh, It's in the category of ABC and the categories I hope will be determined by once I do a hundred mastermind groups, I'll be able to at least figure out like some general categories for Mm -hmm. the kind of people who are in it. Um, Avatars, call them whatever you will. I try not to get too geeky, right? As far as, you know, the description. Profiles linked to uh, LinkedIn. Like yeah, Casey that's a, exactly. The profiles yeah. can link. I mean, not programmatically, but the profiles will have a link to their LinkedIn profile. So you can look at what they put there plus what they have on LinkedIn. Uh, if it grows, I can easily integrate it in. So it draws information from LinkedIn um, mm-hmm. through the API. And so those are the two things I hope to add. And, you know, the financial side of things, of course, would be to become part of this mastermind finding community. But not only finding, I want to do some some of the stuff I see in LI where people can come and give talks on it. Um, mastermind groups and workshops and stuff like that pay 30 bucks a month or 50 bucks a month um to be part of this it'll help you find the mastermind you'll get access to the software that i'm that you know jc and i are talking about plus you'll get access to training on how to run your own mastermind interact with other people all of that and you know 50 bucks a month i get a thousand people signed up I'm good. Um, so, you know, so, you know, that's kind of the long-term goal. Yeah. Uh, and you this. can partner with a lot of these communities like Fizzle and LI and oh, yeah. uh, exactly. Uh, the exactly. Live Your Legend people would probably be, you know. I think everybody, I mean, because well, like we were talking about mastermind groups, I mean, in our context, it's entrepreneurship, but you know, it's also rehab. It's also yeah, know, but diet, I, like, weight loss. You can, you know, I'm sure there's people can get yeah. behind losing weight. So there's other kind of groups that can, I was just well. saying, like, as a, as a beginner, pl- like, as a place to start, that might be a good place because those mm-hmm. people already know that they, at least probably know in passing of the term 
So you have to do less right. of the upfront. Here is what the thing is, and you can right. do more of the get into the thing that you've been wanting to get into, but don't know how slash can't meet the people slash because that's mm-hmm. the problem we run into uh, in LI is that like I'm not gonna put them in groups because I've seen that it doesn't work, at least not with whatever system we've been able to come up with. But so, when I leave people to do it themselves, they're just like, what? I have to talk to people? Oh. And, then it like, <laughs> and then it just doesn't, like, it, and it kind of works. And I can see, like, if someone takes the lead, it works. But if, if everybody just kind of passively is like, I'd like to be part of a mastermind that's like this, and then never does anything about it, nothing's ever going to happen. Those people would benefit from a system like yours mm-hmm. that's just like, Here's the people you should talk to and then make it easier for them. Exactly. And with the post system built in there, essentially that person would be the one taking the lead, right? I want to create a mastermind group with these characteristics. Um, And if we can figure out what characteristics tend to work and what don't, I mean, you know, all women, all men, all older people, all younger people are a mix. I mean, I have no idea. Could you set it up so people could do like trial, like it randomly pairs masterminds based on what they're looking for and they can do like a trial and then rate what they thought about it. And then if they all decide they want to continue, they could continue or. I know like like, programmatically it'd be easy. I'd be curious to see if it worked. Like, kind of like the blind think, dating type thing or the switcheroo type thing. I think that's a really good way to meet one person or yeah. two people who might like, if you do enough of them who could be in like, mastermind partners but it's not a way to set up a group right Mm -hmm. because this is what that's exactly what i do with the mastermind matchup is i just kind of like randomly like at after i teach them what a mastermind is i'm like here we're gonna do like a mini session go off into these completely random groups that zoom assigns to you Mm -hmm. and some of them come out of it and they're like that was awesome i understand and some of them come out of it and are like i didn't know what i was supposed to be doing and that was like a total weird crazy thing you know but like some of them i can see them like they met that one person who like the two of them together can look for a third or a fourth Mm -hmm. or a fifth person to make the group so like it it creates those it can create those connections but it's not yeah it's more comfortable when they get to know at least one or two people i I think that's that's key what you just said i mean getting if two people can start it then they will know people who would be a good match for their group Mm-hmm. That's true. There's, I think, I think to add to what Tiffany's saying, where she was in the beginning, is that I don't know how much random selection will help you. I think if you can start to build really in-depth profile analysis, like I know it sounds silly, but OK Cupid asked me like a hundred stupid questions. Yeah. All the time. And they use those to start to understand how people respond to answer questions. And you can choose to pair people because they're the same or different, and it gives you some options. But I think that where the match process has a very, very high failure rate, I think that there is a role here, especially for people who are looking for really, really high level, or people who are just getting started, where an actual facilitator is worth their weight in gold. And like, hey, look, you know, it's 25 bucks a week for us to have a professional facilitator whose job is to record the session, transcribe it, have notes, hold people accountable, send reminders, and ask questions. Um, and their only job is to, is to get people used to the structure of it on the beginning end of it. And on the higher end of it, they actually have to, their, their job is to be asking the best questions in the group and allow all the experience of the high-end mastermind members to then do the brainstorming that actually creates these amazing ideas, but they serve as sort of the, the flint and steel to, to catch things on fire. Um, so I think that the, the masterminds I've been in that have had a formal facilitator have been amazing because no one's trying to figure out who's on first, who's handling what. The person is doing it and they have it completely handled. And then our job is to make the most of that money and to, uh, and to really put a fire under each other's asses. Um, and when we get off track or someone gets a little too opinionated, the slitter's like, there's like, so what other questions can we ask that are going to solve this problem? And so they can help keep it on the rails, so to speak. 
That's a great idea. Facilitator might be the word I was looking for when I was thinking of, you know, the mastermind leader. I couldn't, you know, I didn't want to call it that because the whole idea is that everybody in the group is an equal. But facilitator, I think, is the, wor well, I, the word I'm looking for. I don't know that I agree with the word equal in your definition. It's actually the only qualm I have with it. Yeah, well, actually, yeah. I, I agree because equal, the reason I wanted to, I used equal was because I wanted to make sure that nobody, you know, to distinguish from a business meeting where there's a boss and there's the rest of it. Um, doesn't necessarily mean equal in the sense of experience or age or any of that kind of stuff. Um, mm -hmm. but so I, I don't know if you could think of a better way. word or a better way. One of the things I'm actually interested in doing is I'm going to start with that definition. And every time I have to modify it, as I start getting more and more mastermind groups in there, I'm going to actually have the history of the definition of mastermind group kind of on a blog post page. So you can see it That's evolve cool. over the years. So maybe yeah, non-hierarchical like non or something. <laughs> no. uh, I, maybe just, <laughs> just invest it. Like, because people come from so many different levels of experience and what they can bring to the table in any given mastermind group. But I think what really makes the difference there is that everybody comes dedicated and committed and invested in bringing their best to help other people. Um, and I don't know if the round table analogy is actually as worthwhile as it is just people of very different backgrounds with the utter commitment to bring the best out of each other. Well, the thing about different backgrounds, you can actually have a, a map. There are probably some masterminds out there with people that have very similar backgrounds, right? Like a mastermind um, of programmers, for example. Talk to right? Casey. She runs yeah. one for virtual assistants. That, exactly. Yeah. Um, so in that case, their backgrounds are complementary. I mean, they, will, of course, don't have exactly the same experience, but they're very much in the same field, which I can yeah. definitely see the benefit for. I think the thing you would get out of that mastermind group is very different than a mastermind group like ours, where everybody does have yeah. very different backgrounds. Um, well, I'll definitely talk to Casey because I, that is a one of, definitely one of the kind of kinds I want to have in there so people can see the difference of, you know, a group of people who have the hers, same. Hers, too, is not – it's not a formal, like, these five people are in it. She runs it every two weeks for members in LI, and it's whoever will show up, like, that particular time. So it's more of, like, like the group might have 15 people in it, but the members who show up to the meetings rotate based on availability. Okay. Well, that's interesting. I mean, again, so that's totally the information different. I want. Yeah. I mean, yeah. ours is set, but I'm sure there are other formats for mastermind groups exactly like that, where it, different people show up every week, even though the goal and the topics are the same every yeah. single week. I've so got one really cool. for writers that is a lot like that. We meet once a month, and the people that show up are very inconsistent. Like, there's usually a, two of us that are almost always there, and then the rest of them may or may not be there. Let me in. Go. Let me in. <laughs> <laughs> I think that's probably one of the challenges and one of the ways you want to record your data is what type of formats get the most consistent type of commitment um, and get people, get, get butts and seats. Um, well, and get the most out of those butts and seats. Right. How do you keep, you know, how do you deal with personality types and maybe more quiet? How do you provoke conversation? Um, how do you show tough love? Like, there's so much good content here as far as developing understandings of these moments. On that last note, I got to ask this. Because of the announcement you made the last time you were in the hot seat, I want to say, is this project going to take away from your ability to, uh, to finish your, uh, your language training and for, the, for your government employees and then get the hell out of Dodge? <laughs> Definitely. No, not at all. Um, because this is going to, this is to me a side hobby project. Um, I mean, I take it seriously. But if I'm going to do one mastermind group a week, and luckily, due to my other businesses, I have a budget for it, I don't have to do everything from scratch myself. I mean, I'll do this video myself just to kind of get the process. Probably the first five I'll do myself. As soon as that happens, I'm outsourcing it. So, really, um, the most amount of work that I need to do. I will, of course, be the one recording all of them because I want that data in real time myself. But it means I need to attend and record the mastermind meetings. That's kind of the high-end stuff that I have to do. The rest of the stuff is relatively low. So let's say it's a one- to two-hour mastermind group meeting once a week. That's probably more or less what my time commitment is going to be, plus any kind of outreach and scheduling I need to do. Um, luckily, I, Live Lingua had the best month it has ever had uh, last month by yeah, like 40% yeah. while I was in vac Whoa. on vacation. Yeah, no, and this month is going to beat it. Um, so it wasn't like a one-month fluke. Something happened, and we had a huge jump uh, in sales last month. So I have a budget uh, is that the can help me. Government thing going well with it? The government thing is also helping. Is but that it's, helping? It's helping, but it's not the, the what 
I did some SEO earlier, and we jumped up. Our our ah. traffic has jumped up about 20, 20 or 30% um, wow. over the last three months. And it takes a little delay, right? I mean, you know, traffic yeah. goes up, people start coming, they sign up for trials, and it take, took about two months for the wave to hit. And last month, it was wow. Uh, um, awesome. So that was very nice because – it was also the most expensive vacation I'd ever taken, so that was kind of <laughs> kind of helped me offset <laughs> that a little bit. Drive a crazy sports car through the Tuscan. That thing. was pretty cool, <laughs> but that wasn't Is this even the most expensive. Was this a result of the the writing that you had Tim doing for you and stuff like that? That's helping. Um, I've also created some more kind of dynamic content on the website in the sense, like you know, apps that help you learn and little. I mean, they're really dinky little things, but I have this database full of like content material and all I all you have to do is kind of combine it in new ways and hey look at that you know that's a new app that'll help you learn vocabulary and it's mm-hmm. and you know if it, it's English to Spanish then I just flip a switch and it's Spanish to English I mean you know because in the database they're all related um, so I'm able to create stuff like that and that's actually been helping a lot for links um, back to the website and links still get delayed it takes cool time to index but I monitored a 300 words and as of last month we went up for, from like to the top three and like 120 new ones um, out of the 300 and we were already there for about 150 so we're like in the top three for like 270 of the 300 words that I've been wow. monitoring for the last few years so um, that's fantastic dude yeah so then to get back on topic I'm not too it's not going to be too much of a distraction additionally because I'm also looking to hire like two or three new staff members uh, in the next three months so they're going to be taking away a lot of the other work do you get a new programmer no, I need. I'm looking. I'm going to start looking for one next week. Um, there's a guy here I might be talking to. He's an ex Peace Corps volunteer who wants to stay here. So you know, my salary is decent for the U.S. It's fantastic for Mexico. Uh, you know, I'm, we're talking top one percent. You know, in Mexico, if you made that much, so he, he might be very interested. And then I need another person to help me answer the emails on the weekends. I've been doing that uh, over the last few years. So somebody do do like Saturday and Sunday email answering, um, and then their free times they they'll do secondary tasks for me, designs or whatever their skills happen to be. So um, time I should hopefully have. Next year I'm going to be focusing on marketing and on this project, not building new projects because I've done that for the last three years and now I have no more pro- more websites and projects than I know what to do with. Um, so I actually have to sell them. I start making money off of them right now. Uh, my other big question that, you know, hopefully you guys can help me out on looking down here, the concepts. Definition. Okay. The biggest one, how am I going to find 100 mastermind groups? <laughs> That's kind of the one I don't know. I, I'm not really sure how to, as, as Tiffany was saying, the thing is, there. I'm sure there are thousands of mastermind groups, if not tens of thousands of mastermind groups across the U.S. and the world. It's just not something that people talk about very much. It's not something that people know. It's not. So finding, I can't just Google, hey, mastermind groups and find 10,000 people. Um, it is nothing. In fact, if you ma- Google mastermind, you just get that awful movie they made a few years ago. I mean, like nothing comes up <laughs> um, on Google. That movie is not completely terrible. According to Rotten Tomatoes, it is 78% <laughs> terrible. And 12 and so that's pretty bad. <laughs> I saw that movie in theaters with a two-year-old, and they liked it a lot. Okay, there you go. So. <laughs> I guess if you're looking at a diff, like a wide array of different skill sets for the masterminds, I mean, I feel like it would be easier to find the higher-level ones because most high-performing people are probably involved in some way. And the only thing I can think of, and it might be too direct, is like going to a podcast like EO Fire and there's seven of them a week and seeing who the guest is and then coming up with some kind of semi-automatic system that you can put in place to contact each one and ask them. But of course, you're going to want to kind of give them some sort of perk um, or a reason to like be involved with it because a lot of people are going to, mm-hmm. they might well, get, actually, get thousands of emails a week, right? So I'm sure. Yeah. Well, that's one of the reasons I want to actually get the 100 masterminds.com established pretty well, right? Get a nice modern looking design, get up a few and professionally done. I mean, you know, when I edit it, it it's helps nice a lot. yeah, so they're going to go and look at it. Like this guy is, you know, not just starting off and hopefully with my business, you know, I have some business background. I have started successful businesses yeah. before, so I'm not just, Hey, I have this idea and I've never done this kind of thing. Before. What, what's that video tool where you can send videos really easily to people? Uh, Tiffany, you guys have used it with like Travis used it with, like you, it's, you like log in and you just create videos and it's like easily sends them to people's emails. Like it's an email video. Oh, I don't know. He usually just attaches a Google drive video. No, there's like an actual, like, oh man. Well, I, I think mean, there's something called cloud app, but it's not really, I've never used it like with my webcam. No, I use it for screenshots. I was just thinking like, 
when I when you reach out to like podcasters or media or whatever, sometimes if you find some people that you really want to um, get it, their attention, like it'll embed a video directly in the email form that they can just click. So it's from you and it might be a lot more uh, effective than just a text email or even like a sound clip from SoundCloud, which do work better than text email sometimes if they play them. But if it's a video, you know, some of the higher tier people that you really want to get, maybe that would be an option. I'll, th I'll try to think of that program because it's really cool. There's, oh, be one, awesome. yeah. there's one that you're, that's similar to what you're describing and it's, I can't remember the name of it. It was something like Bomb, something Bomb. AppSumo promoted it a long time ago, I think. Um, but that's just a, it's a thought as far as like getting in contact if there's not a connection. But I think your best bet is, is asking, like once you find a couple people that are in it, asking them like who else they could introduce you to that might be in a yeah, mastermind I that's high level. Because then you go through somebody they know and they're much more likely to be. Well, that's what, that's what I'm hoping to do. I mean, you know, initially, I know some of you guys are in other masterminds, so hopefully we can, uh, I can do that. I do have some other contacts like Tim. You know, I know he's in a very, he's in a really happy with his mastermind that you all mm -hmm. you guys know. Um, Which so self-selected because I put, I'm pretty sure I put Tim, I put Tim in a mastermind that didn't work. And mm -hmm. then that one fell apart and then they uh. found the next one. Like, yeah, so. and he loves his mastermind now. So one of the things exactly. I also want is a mastermind that's been at least minimum six months, ideally a year of running, right? Because I don't, I don't really want to get into like that first meeting where everybody like, doesn't really know what they're doing. Yeah, yeah. Uh, you yeah. know, I want to get some, you know, success, what quote unquote successful mastermind groups. Um, after six months, I think you at least that's something, right? It's not something that hey, that we met for three weeks. Because I, I was in that, right? I've been in one where we met for like two months and then it disappeared. I mean, nobody. You know, mm -hmm. nobody started showing. There was only like two of us, like Lily said, that kind of showed up, and then eventually it it died out. I was in another one where they were just way too beginners. Um, yeah. And uh, you know, I felt more in a selfish way. I just wasn't getting very much out of it, right? I mean, I was. I enjoy helping. Gotta, them. You have to find a group that fits. Uh, Paul, exactly. you should talk to Paul Lamb. Yeah. He he just he just went into a mastermind group. And he bailed. And he bailed. Um, because he, I asked him why, mm -hmm. or like, like, because I was trying to like reassure him that he made the right decision. So I asked him why he left and, uh, he said that they, they were really focused on making money and that's just uh, not his deal. Like that's which not what other they people would be perfect, questions right? yeah. about like how much money he made and things like that. Which, yeah. Okay. So he, he left and he like, he feels really bad about it, but like, as far as I'm concerned, that was like 1000% the right thing to do because yeah why dedicate your time but so you might want to talk to people who dropped out of mastermind groups as well i like, talk to paul you... every four weeks we kind of have a scheduled call so next time i yeah. talk to him because he said yeah. he was going to join one last time we talked about two weeks ago and i didn't you know he didn't i didn't see the result but i'll go talk to him next time because you're right that'd be another cool interview to have not mm -hmm. only what works but why didn't the mastermind work i've dropped out of them before for sure several okay well that's it i mean some of you guys i'd like to do like one-on-one -on -one once I figure out how to interview people, because I've obviously never done that before. Um, so I need to figure out that whole interview process and podcast just, process. Do I have to wear to pants? Them. No, pants are optional. Uh, <laughs> pants are always optional. Shirts are optional. Gotta have the hat. Otherwise, that's just weird, right? I mean, <laughs> socks, socks yeah. and hat. Socks and hat, at least. So we have a, a little bit of class. This is all I'm asking for, right? So, so um, Ray, if you wanted to like speed run this, and and if I was if I was designing this for you from 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 my side, I would probably grab a VA, mm -hmm. and I would have them list. I think last time I looked, there were like four or five hundred mastermind groups listed on Meetup.com. Oh, um, just pick a big city and then put the distance from any distance, mm -hmm. and I would just go start those and find those and start finding ways to get in contact with them. The next major piece I would say I would want from you um, is I would like a fifteen minute video presentation about your research, what you're trying to understand, uh, what kind of privacy you recommend, what kind of editing privileges you give to people. Because like especially higher end people, having a group of people they can talk about competitive issues with that they can trust is priceless. And exactly. on the internet is not a, a non starter for someone with a with a very successful company in a competitive field. So you want to be able to address those fears and mm -hmm. concerns, really outline your research. And um, so that one says, hey, we're contacting this. This is the entire point of the project. 
um, we'd really love to to record and interview you guys about the systems you use and yada yada yada. Those would be the first two things I'd start with that I think will give you a really fast foot in the door to get to your hundred. Perfect. No, that's 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 a great point. I was I already have the which I'll send to you guys later, but the whole I have your permission to you know to share your video kind of thing, which I've gotten from podcast and I just edited it to for this, but it doesn't address those the editing concerns, which I, I agree a hundred percent. So some of these people, and I think that was a concern that when I talked to one person, he was like, I, I wouldn't feel comfortable with you doing because we talk about a lot of private things. Um, that might, at least for some people, help me get into, get past that point. We're saying at the end, you guys get editing privileges where I will block out anything that's, you know, proprietary to your business or mm -hmm. in your personal, in personal life. You know, people do yeah. talk about personal life things as well. Um, you'll have full rights to edit this thing. Uh, at the end, so I won't share anything that you guys aren't comfortable with. Even going so far as, I mean, you know, if you're not comfortable with this, people seeing you swear, I can beep that part out. I mean, you know, just something little like that. Um, in the case of Heath, I'll probably just like to take the volume up. So when, when, when he says right in the middle, you know, the volume <laughs> shoots up in the middle of the video. Um, but Correct. Exactly. Right. Uh, but for the rest of the people, you can do that. Or even bigger ones, I will chop out a part. And I'll leave it up in a note saying, you know, they, were, they discuss private things here so that the watcher knows that, that this is why we cut it out. And, it's, yeah. you know, and then we move on to the next. Um, I would also I probably get a host like Wistia that doesn't auto share content so that you're hosting all of the content on your website. And it's very difficult for people to download and put it on YouTube. So um, that you can do the same thing on Vimeo. You can make your Vimeo whole is what I was thinking. Yeah. But the thing is, and you guys can correct me because I've not really done much video promotion. I actually was thinking of putting these videos on YouTube um, because one, they're going to be public on the website anyway. But if you want to get the podcast version, the transcripts, the links, the translation, you do have to come to my website because especially when I'm starting out, I'm not going to have that much traffic. So people catch one of these videos on YouTube or at least, you know, let's say there's a hundred videos. I'll put 20 or 30 of them on YouTube. You want more? Come to our site. Those will be, you know, on my site, I'm going to be using Vimeo for the videos. I kind of, I just like their interface a little better, right? It kind of looks cleaner when you embed it in a, in a post. I'm going, so I'm going to use WordPress here, which as you guys know, I hate doing, but I am not going to spend any time programming this. It's kind of, Minimum MVP, minimum viable product. I'm going to throw it up there to see if this actually works without so for, it back in. For YouTube, with what we know about how people's attention spans work, I would actually not put full sessions on YouTube. I would take the principles that you're starting to discover, like commitment or you know timing or hot seat or roundtable, or take all of these different principles that you're starting to explore and create clip shows dedicated around that one principle. Mm. And then you should start to build the following around the, the principles you're designing, and that will build your brand and help people people's attention better in a large public forum. Cool. Yeah. And, you know, speaking of building the brand, I, I want to build the brand 100 masterminds, but one of the things I want to avoid is building it around me as well, right? Um, again, that, as soon as you become the brand and you can't really take three months off a year and travel because that's, you know, no, no. <laughs> Unless you get up to what's the rich cat, rich dad, poor dad level, which I'm pretty sure he doesn't actually do anything anymore. He just, everybody else just kind of runs his business for him. Um, but that, that takes a while to get up to that level. You just have, I mean, as soon as you're ready for that point, I mean, you have some person who does good video, like who looks nice on camera um, or who does great voiceovers, do it for you. Like, hey, I'm Jackie from 100 Masterminds, and today mm -hmm. we're going to talk about it. That's all it takes. Okay. And, <laughs> Nobody... Like when People. I do stuff for Travis, nobody questions it. Really? I just say that I'm from Extra Pack of Peanuts. <laughs> and it's not even slightly weird at all. Because I'm, no, I'm not listed on the site. I'm not anything. These emails just come from this person named Tiffany. Because I don't sign them as Travis anymore. I used to. That's actually really good to know because I didn't, so. I never even occurred to me to do that. Um, yeah, I thought it would have to be me in the beginning, and I was trying to think of a way to. I would, I would have to think of a way to separate myself later um, from, you know, one hundred masterminds being Ray, right? I don't want that. I, you know, I, I want it to be its own thing, its own concept. Just use when you get started and you're writing your minimum viable. What I did with with minions was I just use plural pronouns. I'm like, I always use we. And I, I do that with the Valley problem. Dance Bundle as well. I use that with my wife when I'm disagreeing with her, but she doesn't, you know, we, we don't agree with that, but yeah, she usually slaps me when that happens. So. 
perfect. Okay, no, this is invaluable. I mean, I, you guys are like the first group I've openly like shared all the concept with outside of the, you know, my wife. Um, and so uh, it's great to hear your feedback that this might be something that would be useful more than anything else, right? I mean, I think I told you in the, the, the group my long-term goal. Yeah, my long-term goal, I would love to one day give a TED Talk, but not for the fame. <clears throat> Just because that means everybody who's on TED has this short story to share and something to teach the world, in my opinion, right? I mean, if, you, if you're on the TED stage, you're not just somebody with, eh, talking about something boring like SEO, like the presentations I've given in the past. You're saying something that has an impact. Um, so if I'm able to, you know, figure out how these groups work and able to share it on a TED stage and, you know, help make it the mainstream, like Tiffany is saying, so people actually know what a mastermind is now. That would be awesome because I think a lot of people can benefit from masterminds in all fields of their lives. I mean, you know, whether it's making more money or living a better life, losing weight, you know, kicking a drug habit, whatever it is, I think, you know, group support can really help out. I think the biggest challenge you'll find in this project uh, after you've addressed trust with your participants is going to be developing a streamlined collaboration platform like you're talking about. It is a... That is a brutally competitive niche, uh, and uh, and people have such wide and varying tastes. I'm like, from a pure business analysis standpoint, that's the part that I go, whew, that will be tough. Um, yeah, but that's the part I like. Luckily, there's no expense to doing that from my end, uh, as far other than time, right? Because I can write this whole system, right? I don't need a programmer there to be rewriting it every day. I will just rewrite it um, for whatever I want, but. Also, check Google's cloud AI page. They offer a very, very, very inexpensive, like for the first like 5,000 entries a month, uh, it's almost free, um, to use their translation linguistic AI. So if you're looking for a way to, to very auto-transcribe no. videos. Well, auto-transcribe or translate? Transcribe. Like it'll, it'll, it'll actually transcribe video. Really? I will definitely take a look at that. This transcription is, is not cheap. Uh, it is the Speak AI, Google's uh, uh, cloud recognition platform. Speak. And when you say 5,000, like what 5,000 what minutes? 5,000 words? Uh, let me find pricing. Yeah. I'm staring at it right now. Uh, no upfront costs, pay as you go. Uh, looks like they have a pricing calculator. Okay, I'll give so, it a shot. I yeah, mean, these I are going to be sizable. I mean, like this one, what, where we do about two hours on one of ours. I'm guessing most masterminds are minimum one hour, probably one to two hours. Um, based on some of the books I read, the people that you know Tiffany mentioned were – the professional moderators, they literally do like whole day masterminds, right? Um, and these yeah, are the, no. the, the in-person ones, but which have catering and you actually bring an expert in in the first round so that everybody in the group learns something new as part of their mastermind groups. Um, that which, is what I'm building Council of Doom based on, that model. Yeah, so I mean, you, that, that sounds fascinating to me. If you can figure out a trade with, did you ever talk to Diane when she was part of LI? Not me, no. Um, she, was, she was an investment banker, and now she's a coach. And she's really big on not tra like not giving her time away for free. <laughs> um, okay. But she would be an interesting person to talk to about like m different levels of masterminds, because I think she's been in several different ones. And like she just left LI recently. Um, do you still have but, her contact information that I can? Yeah, yeah I have sorry. her email. Um, so I can introduce you guys, but you'd have to, she's not big on like just doing stuff. So you have to come I'll up pay. with some kind of trade for her or something. I'll pay, I don't care. I mean, you know, as I said, luckily, this is the I first think, business I'm starting can. with a budget um, in my life. I mean, so this, I, this is going to be interesting. She does a lot of conventions. She goes to conventions like almost every other weekend. She just travels the States going to business conventions. And I, ha I think when I was talking to her, she mentioned being part of these like higher paid for masterminds. And then even then like moving out of that space and like becoming too advanced for the one she was paying for and then moving to the next one and like doing that. So I think she talked about that. So let me check and make sure that that's what we talked about. And then if it was, I'll connect you guys. That'll be awesome. That'll be awesome. Um, 
you might also consider talking with Natalie uh, Sisson. Sisson. Yes. And you can. Yeah. Jason and Trav can intro to you to her because okay. they're friends. Natalie. And she's in the middle of a big transition from suitcase entrepreneur to mm -hmm. her new project. And yeah. I think both her new project and suitcase entrepreneur probably have the kind of followings where people are very involved in masterminds. Um, and so it may be a really good place to sort of do an outreach uh, partnership with her because she's got a massive, massive list. Nice. I saw one of her talks she gave at LI. She mentioned she, yeah, she talked about her income openly, which was like, oh, that's pretty, pretty decent. She, so. Yeah, she's always. Her, her talk at LI was probably the only thing of her content I didn't like. But that was only because I thought she started her pitch too early. And it's <laughs> oh, I remember that was right after you joined because you emailed me to tell me that you weren't <laughs> yeah, happy about it. I, I saw the rest of her content. I didn't mind. But if you're going to do a, you know, uh, an, a, a, a one hour webinar and the second half is just one long ass pitch, I, I'm going to leave. Because <laughs> I just, I don't have that much time to be sold to. It, it wasn't anything personal. Just like, that doesn't work for me. But I went through the rest of Suitcase Entrepreneur and I was like, oh, okay, she's totally legit. I just yeah. didn't have to like that one event. <laughs> um, also, Ray, Jason's part of a, a mastermind that he's been in for years. Yeah, he said he, he, he was the one who mentioned that he was not comfortable with people recording it because it's too intimate. But oh, I'd like to talk to him. Me. Yeah, I'd like to talk to him about what he's got. What, you know, I'd like... Like a question I'm curious about is, you know, for example, what's something that a success he's had in business or life that he would not have had without having being part of that mastermind group? I think that would yeah. tell a lot about what's something yeah. outside of mass. And I'd also like to know why is it intimate without going into the details, but what kind of things do, do they discuss family issues and, you know, troubles within the mastermind group? Or does it, is it just because the intimate details about your business? Again, I don't want details about anybody else there, but, or even himself, but I mean, you know, It'd be interesting, I think, to the listeners to to know what kind of things are talked about in a mastermind group. And it'd be mm -hmm. interesting to a lot of people, you know, to hear that you become so close that you talk about these kind of things with the people, you know. You talk about things that you don't you can't talk with your family about, maybe. I don't know if that's the case. Or, you know, because they are out it's sometimes nice to talk to outsiders who are not emotionally vested in certain things that are going on in mm -hmm. your life, right? So I'd like to get that out of Jason, you know, maybe in an interview if he'd be willing to talk about his mastermind group, not record it. But. I think Jacob Sokol would be another really good point of contact. Yes. Mm -hmm. um, talk to Trav. Yeah. Uh, Travel Jacob intro. Sokol runs a coaching website, but he's, he does amazing challenges and he really likes to work with tweaking processes and gamification. And, and like he that. really likes to run retreats too, which are essentially giant masterminds. Yeah. Is he the one who gave oh, the talk on how to, how to run a retreat or something like yeah. that on L Okay, I heard, I heard that one. He's, a, he's like a super intense dude, so be ready for some questions because that guy's, yeah. he's going to come at you. Yeah, yeah, no, that's no problem at all. I'll answer him as best. As, I'd like to get a few under my belt so I can at least answer them. Um, yeah. You know, if you ask me, what are you going to do for this? I'm like, oh, I don't know. But, I, you know, after I've done five or ten, I can at least say this is. He just, he's legit, man. Like, watching videos of him kind of, like, terrifies me. I feel like I need to, like, when I watch videos of him, <laughs> so, like, into it, I just, like, can't. I can't if, handle it. If you want to branch outside traditional entrepreneurs, you should get in touch with Steve Cam. Um, uh, yeah. He runs Nerd Fitness. Yeah. Oh, I've read his book, uh, Power Up Your Life. Yeah. Him right. and Trav are also friends. And, and wow. his system is a Trav lot knows of everybody. He really people does. by their uh, desires for accomplishment. So when you get into nerd fitness, like their entire forum is set up with like rangers and wizards and fighters. And these are people I love that. I think it'd be too geeky for Mastermind. I think most people would be like, what the heck is a druid? I mean, you know. Right. But his would, insight you know. in how to pair people into support group communities and run retreats that do that for them, like as he runs yeah. a number of high-end retreats, like I think he could be really invaluable. Honestly, the idea for the Mastermind group was based off that. I mean, you know, the whole Mastermind soft kind of system I want to build in the back was inspired by Nerd Fitness. Nerd fitness. Yep. I, I really like the idea of, you know, you create an avatar for yourself, um, call it something else in this case, but this would be like, you know, what you're doing, what you're looking to get out of life um, and pairing you up with groups. This would, heck, you could have mastermind groups for fitness as well. I mean, there's nothing that's Absolutely. keeping you from that, um, but it wouldn't specifically be fitness. Uh, I wouldn't be surprised and I can't trick, but I think the idea for the mastermind group came after I listened to Level Up Your Life. I was looking to do something similar. Um, yeah. And I think the whole... I was like, but what could I fit it to? And I think the mastermind group. So definitely, again, once I have a little bit of street cred with having a few of them up there, I want to reach out to these people. And the last intros one would be great. 
the last one on top of my list because Heath knows this guy and Travis knows this guy. Um, who's the guy that run, runs Boots Home? Sean Keener. That guy. Yeah. Sean Keener never, is so nice. That guy very, is, he lives so like nice. three blocks from me. Yeah, I know very really few is. entrepreneurs who take the, wow. the professional and personal development of their employees as highly as he does. Yeah. And so this They're is... They're a company that might have internal masterminds. Well, that yeah. I would be love to hear. Yeah, that's what I, I. So I would fly up and you know record those if they would let me. Uh, he has a the, little like lake cabin thing like on the gorge, just like an hour from Portland that he just like goes and stays at for like weeks out mm-hmm. of contact. Nice. I don't yet see him actually, but I missed out like when Travis. You would really like him. I they think. went out there with him, and when he was out here, like I tried so many times to make that connection work, but. It just never worked. But he lives, like, not far from me at all. Like, I think he'd get coffee with you. Like, I just met him, like, one day. We went back to the house to, like, pick something of Trav and Heather's up when we were dropping them off at the airport. And, like, we ended up sitting around talking to him for, like, an hour. He's, like, the nicest guy. Yeah. So I'm pretty sure if you were, like, hey, Trav, can you just intro me to Keener so we can get coffee? Like, the answer would probably be yes. Okay, you know, definitely will. Well, I, apparently, here. I'm going to be asking Trav for a lot of intros because he seems to know everybody who's out there with this <laughs> kind of thing. But yeah. either do it fast or wait a month because <laughs> those yeah, no, no. are your I, options. This project officially, I think, is going to start in January, right? So I'm waiting until oh, you know. He'll probably yeah. be back on board by then. Exactly, <laughs> and it's Christmas is coming up. I mean, I want to get the website up. I want to get this one up. Maybe one or two more uh, private interviews. I have some article ideas I wanted to do. Uh, just kind of describing what I'm pl- hoping to do with this, but I'm not sure if I'm going to write articles or if I'm just going to record myself and transcribe that as well, kind of to keep the whole format the same across the whole page, right? It'll be video, audio, text, video, audio, text um, in each one of the posts. So I might just hire a full-time transcriber from the Philippines or something like that to kind of get them That's up right. there. So, but, okay. Right. Um, thanks a lot. That was awesome. I mean, that's exactly the kind of information I wanted. Uh, and I'm, listen, I'm going to say, I'm going to get started. I already did. <laughs> Two hours was getting started with you guys. So thanks a lot for letting me do this. <laughs> I'm looking uh, forward to the TED Talk and the book. Yeah, well, you know, one day, one day. I'll, my wife will be, I think I mentioned, my wife is going to TED Women next week in New Orleans. Yeah. So, you know, yeah. she's she's going to be seeing real TED Talks. So she'll come back and it's like, yeah, you're not even close. You know, I'm like she, on the same page as JC is like just wanting to see this so that I can then use it for LI. That's the point. That, that's the reason I'm doing it. I mean, I want people to go out and use teach it. It's not. Me, Ray. It's, um, we'll learn everything and then teach I'm not going to teach anything. I'm going to, you know, everybody else is going to teach and I'm just going to share. And then everybody else can kind of take what they learn. I will, like, like JC is saying, I do want to kind of compile the information in the sense, you know, I'm a computer geek. So I want to say, you know, breakdown of the, what's the average breakdown of a mastermind group that lasted over a year as far as male and women, you know, females and ages and uh, backgrounds and all that kind of stuff. So we could at least get some norms in place but that won't like everything else it'll tell us what that's what the average is but it doesn't mean something at the extreme end all women all men young old does not work it just means in general this is what the average mastermind group looks like Um, i would go from there i would be super interested to if you you actually got a hundred mastermind groups and you start to to have consistent feedback from those I think semantics analysis on what type of conversations are happening and the the word usage and like Mm -hmm. How the, I would love to see that data because I think that would be really fascinating to hear how people talk to each other and the kind of conversations that are happening in a mastermind group um, as far as like tone and emotional impact and that kind of stuff. I think it would be incredible science to actually kind of like provide to the world. It would be really easy. I mean, remember, I'm going to transcribe it all too. So I'm going to have it in text format. So, wow. I mean, it's literally going to be a matter of just pumping that into an engine somewhere and getting everything out. It's not going to be, nobody has to come up with technology of how to, you know, to why a, a software to watch a video and get all the information out there. It's going to be pure text that we can pump it in there. Um, I can even tag it up if it's necessary, right? To say that this, this was a female, this was a male. Yeah. Even putting in stuff, but as I know in HTML in the back, you can use, you know, tags. I can say this was said by a man who was in his thirties married. I mean, you know, I can put all that information in the background so that this, this information, and you know, this thing will have it all. MR. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. Exactly. So we could really extract some really cool information from that, yeah. uh, which is another reason. I mean, it'll be anonymous, but uh, it's another reason why I need people to sign stuff. They'll say, you know, I'm going to be using your information without your name, but in order to generate this kind of data for hopefully the good of everybody. 
Ray, I love your brain. You're lucky you're married and a dude. <laughs> and then otherwise I live you'd be thousands stuck of miles there. away. Yeah, <laughs> more important. Oh, that right. wouldn't stop me, baby. I will walk a hundred miles, and I will walk a hundred oh. miles. Well, you guys are welcome <laughs> to visit, but that's about it. So yeah. <laughs> so. Okay. Well, thanks a lot, guys. I will, you know, get this thing up, get it ready, and I'll email you all so you guys can take a look at it and you know, get some more feedback as to what kind of the format and how does it look and all that kind of stuff on the website uh, before I do any other ones. Hey, message me awesome. sometime. I want uh, I want you to come and meet and, and and maybe briefly for like ten or fifteen minutes pitch my mastermind group the idea and then have you come in and record one of our sessions. Awesome. So I mean, so I'll message one second. Message Jason. Okay, cool. Yeah. We'll do. I'm in another regular mastermind as well. I don't know how useful it would be to you because we are. I don't know. I feel like we're there more for emotional support for each other than than like really strong business. Yeah. Well, purpose, I see. But. That's actually very but useful, right? But do you find right? it useful? Exactly. I don't care if it's business. Yeah. I mean, so my only, the question there would be, of course, I, I'll definitely reach out to you, and then you'll have to ask everybody else in the group if they're okay for with me doing this. Mm -hmm. um, because getting into emotions, yeah, you're getting into a much more sensitive area there, and people are sharing and having something Yeah, I mean, it's not like a therapy session or anything like that. It, I just feel like um, we've been meeting for uh, two and a half plus years now. Mm-hmm. And uh, we were very regular with it, and um, awesome. none of us are super advanced as far as business-wise, but we're all location-independent. We're all kind of isolated, and it gives us, like, this, this uh, group where we have friends, we have connection, we have a regular meeting. It's like having coffee with friends every couple of weeks, you know? I love it. I mean, so, that, that's, that's what I want people to see, that a mastermind – I think the most common mastermind group or the most common use of a mastermind is what we're doing here, right? For people kind of a business yeah. aspect. But I well, think mastermind groups have a it is business. It is business. I mean, we do talk about our businesses. Mm -hmm. But I don't feel like, at least for me, it's been super useful business-wise. Maybe awesome. for them it has been. But for me, uh, I, I haven't gotten a ton of business value out of it. But I have gotten social value out of it. Perfect. No, no, I'll definitely be reaching out to all you guys, um, you know, to see if you have any other groups that you – think would qualify as a mastermind that they, they one, wouldn't mind recording this the, the cool like I have a solo one with Jason Berwick and that has been the base like the backbone to all of the Amazon stuff I've ever done since day one and you know if you read through that you would lock us up probably give us a death penalty for a long time <laughs> uh, there is just some it mixes emotions and business you know like there's it's just mania lunacy but well, that would be interesting too. I mean, a mastermind group with two people. Um, yeah, See, but I, I mean, also it's kind of accountability. Is that like accountability? Oh, okay. yeah. Accountability. Yeah. That's... So when I do the presentation for Li, I list the definition of a mastermind is two or more people who meet on a regular basis. And like, is the beginning of it. And so I, I personally think that accountability buddies or like. Even I don't even know if Keith, if you guys keep each other accountable so much as you are talking about business and stuff, but like I think that counts as a mastermind. So I think in that way, a lot of the stuff like you were talking about, like the fitness stuff, like a fitness accountability partner, to me would classify as a mastermind as long as there was a goal. Mm -hmm. But that there we're getting yeah. in the slippery slope as well, you know, because I had gym partners for years. We're going to the gym, but I wouldn't really call that a mastermind. We just kind of help yeah, baby. Yeah, workout but, buddy. You know, <laughs> workout buddy. You know. So, but uh, yeah, I, think I mean, I see like where you're level. coming from. Exactly. Like, do you just check in once a week, like via text, like, hey, do you do this thing? Yeah. No. No, we met at the gym every day and we work out together. Well, but, yeah. yeah, but I mean, like, is it that kind or, you know, like the other end of it, is it two people who are keeping each other accountable to fitness, but also talking about their form at the gym and showing each other videos of their squats and like, you know, doing all this other stuff and sharing articles and resources and things that they're finding at the same time. Like that's more of like a mastermind version of, I think, accountability buddies, if that makes sense. No, I definitely. And that's, I think that's the key of why one of the big tasks is defining what a mastermind is. I mean, you're really yeah. kind of fine tuning that definition over time of what qualifies as a mastermind. Yeah. Yeah. I, it's, uh, I think, Probably where I draw my line is beyond just accountability is uh, problem solving. Um, my gym buddy, I don't need from him 
and, and frankly, it would be dangerous for me to have him try to figure out how to help me lift more weight. <laughs> uh, right. Um, but a, but a, but a, but a group that actually kind of meets to, to ask those questions and to solve problems and to be supportive. I think that's sort of where it hits mastermind group for me is where it's the, the combined mental uh, contributions of the group creating something better than one person would accomplish on their own. I like problem solving. I think I'm going to, I yeah. think version two of the definition is already going to go up on the site. I mean, that version one's what I put. I'm going to put them. I'm going to, that's going to be there. And then version two, literally like 24 hours later or however <laughs> like, a week later, I already have version two. So I'm going to have to put problem solving in there. And hopefully over time, it'll just kind of define itself. I don't want it to get too, you know, the definition shouldn't be a five page essay. I mean, it needs to be a few lines, but kind of fine tune that definition. Um, I think will help. Thank you.